become engaged in the process. Um, and this report sets out a timetable for the policy and performance committees to get ahead of the care really, uh, from the beginning of June uh, 2014, right at the beginning of the new year fiscal year, for them to have uh, future council work mainstream into the work of the policy and performance committees in order that members are able to make a contribution to the debate and shape the future uh, direction in terms of what kind of uh, council we're going to be. So uh, this is um, recommended to Cabinet to, um, in, in order that this can go forward now into the programme for policy and performance in the future. Okay, thanks very much for that, Anna. I'm just going to ask Graeme to say a few words. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay, 
so uh, that, I think, is, uh, sets the scene for this report. So recommendations are in uh, paragraph 14. So can we read those recommendations? Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Right, that takes us on then to item 8, which is the capital programme for maintenance of unclassified roads and severe weather recovery funding. Harry. Uh, Reference of this report is to seek Cabinet's approval for the 500,000 allocation of capital funding for preventative maintenance to unclassified and residential streets. This capital programme is determined by priority needs and also takes into account the views of the constituency committees and the locally based highways inspectors regarding no maintenance repairs. The outcome is a program of all the streets which are to be resurfaced or received service treatments as set out in the appendix of the report. This report also details the additional dedicated fund announced by the Chancellor in his budget statement to provide for essential maintenance following the recent severe weather. I just think it's worth adding though that uh, this is not new money that the Chancellor has announced. The government has found this funding through savings made elsewhere over the years. For instance, it's worth noting that Wills Local Transport Plan, the LTP, has been cut from more than 6 million per year to 4.8 million over the span of the LTP 3 Local Transport Plan 3. That's from 215-16 to 220-21. And that's going to include any local sustainable transport funding at capital allowance. So that's about 7 million pounds put in LTP funding. So it's not new money. Anyway, will have been allocated £364,447 from that fund, and this report seeks, seeks authority to approve the detailed programme for, for utilising that funding and the conditions of that funding. So it is recommended that the following are approved. The programme of schemes for the capital funding, the arrangements for making changes to the programme, noting the acceptance of severe weather recovery grants and the arrangements for approving the programme of schemes to use that grant. Okay, thanks, Harry. Um, can I just say, obviously, welcome this uh, additional funding uh, to improve our, um, uh, main, the maintenance of our classified roads. Um, I'm really pleased that as part of the um, uh, assessment process, we've been able to take on the uh, um, priorities of constituency committees, um, uh, elected members, and the public, as it says in the report. I think that's um, that's good that we've been able to, um, you know, uh, involve the constituency committees particularly, because you know uh, we are really keen uh, with our localism agenda to uh, devolve uh, as much responsibility as possible. So that's uh, that's a real move forward. And obviously, Harry, you've made the point, although it's welcome additional money, it doesn't, it doesn't go that far in terms of replacing the huge reduction that we've seen in our LTP, so it's, I think it's worth highlighting that. Uh, ne nevertheless, the, uh, the, the details in the appendix of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the streets and roads that will um, benefit from this uh, uh, funding, so I think, uh, Harry, you've moved recommendations in, in paragraph 12, can I uh, ask Cameron to be agreed those Okay, Sasha, thank you very much. <coughs> okay, and that then takes us to agenda item nine, which are the uh, campaigns to improve environmental quality. Brian, do you yes. this? Thank you, Chair. This report basically outlines three campaign approaches to be implemented to help tackle environmental issues that I think everyone will agree are of particular importance to all residents within the world. And what the Cabinet's been asked to do tonight is to endorse each of the campaigns and in so doing commit a total of £521,000 of funds which have already been identified and approved through the Council's 2014-15 budget setting process. The first campaign here focuses on tackling alleyway dumping. For a period of two years, alleyways will return to a four-weekly cleanse Alongside enhanced intelligent led investigation work, this project aims to reduce the amount of waste illegally discarded and at the same time increase both the quality and the quantity of recycling, which I think is very important. 
residents will also receive more feedback on the preventative work undertaken and we shall request uh, their help as residents to keep alleyways clean and tidy through the active promotion of good neighbourhood packs and that's outlined in Appendix 1 to the report chair. Two pilot areas have already been identified to undertake extensive engagement with residents to identify root causes of the problems and hopefully implement long-term sustainable solutions. The second campaign chair will tackle the highly undesirable and contentious issue of dog fouling, which people all over the world are constantly complaining about. Up to 120 locations over a six-month period will benefit from a high-profile campaign. The campaign aims to embrace the willingness of those affected by dog fouling to provide intelligence enabling effective targeting of our dog fouling patrols, at the same time sending out a clear message to those minority of irresponsible dog owners that local communities, businesses and the council generally are totally united in their intention to wipe out this antisocial behaviour. Finally, Chair, the last part of the campaign is an extension of the highly successful Love Will Grants. This grant process will enable up to 80 more grants voted by the public again, so they will decide where the money should go, to be awarded to local people who need a small amount of money to help with their perhaps not so small community efforts to improve Wirral's overall environment. And I would hope tonight, Chair, that the Cabinet will agree that the, the aims of this particular report and the recommendations contained on the bottom of page 91 and the top of page uh, 92 support our corporate priorities and as such deserve the full support of cabinets and I'm sure they would also deserve the full support of rural residents. So, thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Brian. Um, can I just add a couple of things uh, from, from uh, my point of view? I mean, obviously, uh, I welcome the, um, the, the initiative around extra resources uh, to tackle it, tackling uh, the alleyway and the dog cloud. And I think, I think you made the point in your comments, Brian. Uh, this is about a, a sort of very broad approach. It, yes, it's about enforcement. We need to be tough on people who um, dump in that way and let their dogs foul on, on pavements. But it's also about engagement and education, about trying to change people's behaviour. Uh, and that's as equally important and important time. So I really, really welcome that very broad uh, approach. And I think, you know, we are responding to, uh, you know, I think we all, as, as members, uh, speak to our constituents uh, do our surgeries and attend uh, public meetings and residence meetings and, and these issues are usually near the top of the people's business priority. So it's great that we're able to put additional resources in to respond to that. Can I just say as well, our, as finally on the Love Wirral uh, plan, um, what a fantastic initiative I, I believe that's been. Um, you know, and, and you've really led, led it, Brian, and I, I pay tribute to you. And, and I think the fact that we've had um, you know, so many people take part in that campaign Eight and a half thousand people voted as part of the process is uh, it's, it's a testament to how popular that's been. And, and as you say, uh, even modest amounts of money can make a big difference to some of the community projects that uh, you know, we're funding through the Love Wirral campaign. So I'm delighted that we're, we're kind of taking that uh, forward as well. So um, I think Brian's kind of adequately set out the details. So uh, can I ask Cabinet, can we read the recommendations in paragraph 12? Uh, to page 91, over on page 92, are they agreed? Agreed. Fantastic, thank you very much. Thank uh, right, so that um, concludes the business. Can I just say, before we go, um, this is the, the final cabinet of the uh, municipal year, uh, as well as thanking uh, members of the cabinet for their contributions. Can I also, on behalf of the cabinet, thank the officers for the excellent yeah, yeah, yeah. support that they've given to uh, the cabinet, not just Servicing the, uh, the work of the cabinet over the last year. It's been very much appreciated. So, Brian, I'd like to ask you to you too. It's a pleasure to work with you. Okay. okay, that's the end of the, of the business. I know some people are going to the Constitutional Committee after this, but can I uh, thank you for your attendance and I'll go to the meeting.